Hello everyone, Adored Medic here and in this video let us learn about chest x-rays. Basically, the basics of interpreting a chest x-ray. So if you visit a surgery or a medicine department outpatient clinic, you will see that chest x-rays are one of the most commonly ordered x-rays in the hospital setting. And reading a chest x-ray is very essential for a medical student and a junior doctor. So in this video, let us understand how we read a chest x-ray. So first of all, let us understand the standard technique of clicking a chest x-ray. Now this is a receiver in front of which a patient is made to stand and from the back of the patient we fire x-ray beams. And as the x-ray beams traverse from the posterior end of the patient towards the anterior end, this is known as a posterior anterior view in erect position in suspended end inspiration. Why we need a suspended end inspiration? So that we can visualize the parts of the lungs and different angles that is costophrenic and uh, cardiophrenic angles clearly. But in case of unconscious patients, polytrauma patients or even pediatric patients, we cannot follow this PA system. So we follow special techniques and click up AP view x-ray in them. Now, what is the difference between a PA X-ray and an AP X-ray? We will discuss in some other video. But for this video, let us understand how we interpret a standard X-ray of chest. That is a PA erect suspended end inspiration view. Now, first we talk about exposure. Before that, let me orient you to our system of learning radiology. On the left hand side, I will keep an unlabeled X-ray. On the right hand side, I will keep a labeled X-ray. On the right hand X-ray, I will label different structures and it's your job to identify the same structures on the left hand side unlabeled CXR or chest x-ray. So first we check for the exposure, whether the exposure has been correct or not. So how we check that? We look for the lower thoracic vertebra visible on the chest x-ray like this ones. Now see on the left hand side that the boundaries of the lower thoracic vertebrae are barely visible. If they are barely visible that points towards up proper exposure. If the exposure is more, in that situation, there will be more clear view of the boundaries of the lower thoracic vertebra and in case of less exposure, the boundaries of the lower thoracic vertebra won't be visible clearly. Then we go for rotation. Now how we check for rotation of the ch chest? Now during clicking the x-ray, the patient should be aligned properly and there should not be any rotation. To check for rotation, we first identify the clavicles and we identify the spinous process of the vertebra just at the level of the clavicle. And then we determine the distance between the spinous process and the clavicles on both sides. If the distance from the clavicle to the spinous process is same on both sides, it is an indicative of a well-centered x-ray. If not, then there is some degree of rotation. Then we go for uh, identification of ribs. Now over here, let me show you one rib over here. Now this is an outline, outline of a rib. Now you may ask why I have ended the outline abruptly in the lower part. I have done the, so because the posterior end of the rib is more towards the midline because it articulates with the vertebrae. But towards the anterior end, you will see that the ribs have costal cartilages and ribs per se do not articulate with the sternum. The cartilages articulate with the sternum and cartilages are less visible on x-ray than ribs. And hence, it seems that the ribs are abruptly ended towards the anterior end. So this ending helps us to determine the posterior end and the anterior end. And this, by this fashion, we can identify all the ribs one by one. So this is the first rib, second rib, third rib, fourth, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th. Now if you count the posterior ends, you will see in one proper end expiration chest x-ray, you will see 10 posterior ends and 6 anterior ends. Now if there are posterior ends 10 and anterior ends 6, that indicates an adequate post inspiration. Right? Now, it's your job to identify the ribs on the left hand diagram. The anterior end as well as the posterior end. Now we go for the cardiac size and shape. Let us first come to the size part. We determine that by looking at the cardiothoracic ratio. So we take the greatest diameter 
of the heart as indicated by the black arrow then we take the thoracic diameter and then we take a ratio now if a cardiac thoracic ratio in pa view is less than 0.5 that is normal 0.5 to 0.55 is borderline and more than 0.55 indicates a cardiomegaly now find out the shadow of the heart and determine your cardiothoracic ratio now let us come to the shape of the heart now on the on the shape aspect we can see the contour of the heart and this specific contours indicate certain parts like this part indicates the projection of the aorta and known as aortic knuckle the bulge just below it is known as the part of left atrium then we see the left ventricle on the right hand side we can see the shadow of svc then the right atrium and the ivc so these are the structures that are visible on the contour of the heart then we go for something known as the hilum of the lungs now hilum of the lungs are made by bronchovascular structures but are mainly contributed by the vascular structures so if you see there are certain finger like projections that go towards the lungs these are the vessels now these are more, more or less barely visible if you see more prominence that is a sign of a disease and less prominence is also a sign of a disease and finally we go for something known as the trachea now i hope you can identify the trachea if the trachea is in the midline that's a good thing but in certain disorders of the lung the trachea can get shifted to one side and that indicates some pathology now we we'll finally look for the angles that are made by the diaphragm that is the cardiophrenic angles and the costophrenic angles in these angles we see collection of fluid in case of hemothorax or pyothorax so looking for costodiaphragmatic and cardiophrenic angles are also very important so this is what we learned in this video a quick summary in 30 seconds now once you have understood this summary i would ask you to practice drawing the structures or seeing the structures that we have discussed in this video on the left hand side x ray and that makes you an able person to read a chest x ray so cheers everyone by this time you are able to understand or read a proper chest x ray to get high quality notes and flash cards you can follow me on my instagram and facebook page the link is in the description box also for medicine related content follow my youtube channel the nord medic and for biology related content you can follow animated biology with orpan who is a proud collaborator of our channel also if you want to get in touch with me you can contact me through these connection links given in the given over here until then bye bye see you in the next one